I titled today's Neville Goddard Conversation Mind Map, You Lovingly Imagine Them, They Lovingly Imagine You. I'd like to continue our conversation on the phenomena of people showing up saying the same thing and or relating in the same way we imagine. Which to go meta to that, I've also been having a lot of conversations these days with those who share with me that they too are increasingly noticing this phenomena. Neville states, It cannot be stated too often that consciousness is the one and only reality. For this is the truth that sets us So now consciousness, although appearing as separate objects, people, environments, is actually not divisional at its essence. This is the truth that sets us free. We are actually one at the core, beyond appearances. Our essence is existence itself. It may appear that you have an eye, and I have an eye, and they have an eye, which is fine for the theater of life. Upon deeper meditation, we realize that there truly is only one eye, as he says here. There is no one that is not all that is for consciousness, although expressed in an infinite series of levels, is not divisional. There is no real separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be divided. This is precisely why, when you imagine yourself to be a certain way, people show up and represent you the way you imagined yourself to be. Notice this. You're in one state and you experience them one way. Then you're in another state and you experience them another way. So to get to the seeming depth of this, let's look at this quote here. He says, I am is a feeling of permanent awareness. The very center of consciousness is the feeling of I am. I may forget who I am, where I am, what I am, but I cannot forget that I am. The awareness of being remains, regardless of the degree of forgetfulness of who, where, and what I am. I am is that which, amid unnumbered forms, is ever the same as in, you exist. And this is why I said, seeming depth. Because the feeling of permanent awareness is here and now. And by this, I mean, respectfully, beyond concepts in mind. It is beyond beliefs held as true. Beyond appearances as loving and beautiful as they are. As awareness is your true essence, you are the lover of them. You may say, 10 years ago, I loved blueberries. Now I love strawberries. They're my favorite. All of these are conditions that we have placed on awareness. As he says here in his book, Feeling is the Secret. The world And all within it is our conditioned consciousness objectified. Consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. Why do we put conditions? It sounds like limitations. Well, actually, when we understand it from a life experience perspective, It makes 
perfect sense. We condition our consciousness so we can enjoy a wide array of life experiences. Today you enjoy chocolate and tomorrow you enjoy honey. There's nothing wrong with that. So if we didn't have life experiences, nothing would appear. You would no longer physically appear to exist. The world would not physically appear to exist. Like Shiva, for example. It is said that if his eyes are closed, this would symbolize the dissolution of the universe. Often he's shown with his eyes half open to symbolize the harmonious dance cycles of the universe. In spiritual alchemy, this is dissolution and coagulation, which means fragmenting a state into its core elements to reform it again into another state. Like taking apart a Lego train and using the same blocks to form an airplane. I remember a memory vividly when I was a few years old. My grandmother taught me how you can make something in Lego and then take it apart and make something else from the same blocks. And she actually made me an airplane to explain the process. So you are formless awareness. And from there, you mentally feel yourself into a reality, which we can call your chosen state, to give this world the form you desire. You disentangle your mind from the evidence of the senses and focus your attention on an invisible state in your imagination, feeling it as reality, like he says here. To cultivate the faculty of seeing the invisible, we should often deliberately disentangle our minds from the evidence of the senses and focus our attention on an invisible state, mentally feeling it and sensing it until it has all the distinctness of reality. Earnest, concentrated thought focused in a particular direction shuts out other sensations and causes them to disappear. We have but to concentrate on the desired state in order to see it. The habit of withdrawing attention from the region of sensation and concentrating it on the invisible develops our spiritual outlook and enables us to penetrate beyond the world of sense and to see that which is invisible. So I bring this quote up quite often and intentionally. It's important to practice this again, again, and again till it re-becomes natural, childlike again. So to enter into the state where others show up relating with you the same way you imagine, except that reality is that way beyond seemingly conflicting appearances. For to desire a state is to already have it. And each time, if it doesn't appear the way you desire it to be, you reimagine it the way you desire it to be. This means you don't need to argue nor try to change the world. That would be forceful. Let it be and let your natural self be. God does everything for you. So here we are not applying force. Here we are letting the unseen power take care of everything for us. So for example, you may say to yourself, people show up relating harmoniously wherever I go. Or you could use the Parrot app to record that and repeatedly play it to yourself. And then you feel that reality is that way. As he says here, when I speak of feeling, I do not mean emotion, but acceptance of the fact that the desire is fulfilled. So this is feeling as reality, like that's the way it is, from which the emotional relatability to the world happens naturally from that state. 
Then let's say you go about your day and you notice it happening. Wonderful. As you remain that way, it becomes your dwelling place. So let's say you come across someone and you polarize to something that they say in which you identify with a doubt, no shame or condemnation. You reimagine it the way it would be ideally. For example, you might say, perhaps I interpret it differently. We're still in sync or something like that. And you'll notice you're feeling it real again. It's okay if you end up in a different state. We may identify with different states all day long. Returning to your chosen state makes it your dwelling place. Now, if one finds people are too intimidating to apply this for, then it can be done with, let's say, cars and houses or material objects as well. You see, whenever one looks at an exotic car, or luxury house, for example. They imagine the way it is. They may assign the meaning of not worthy or could not afford it or something like that. Thus, they are dwelling in that state. So it's truly not about the car or house. It's how they believe themselves to be in relation to it that determines the kind of experiences they have in their life with those objects and in general. If they genuinely do not desire that car or house, that's great. They could simply imagine it lovingly. Like, that's a beautiful car or house that someone gets to enjoy and leave it at that. As they imagine this again and again with each exotic car or luxurious house, as It is what is done inside that counts when it comes to metaphysics. Eventually, they'll notice an exotic car or luxury house, and they'll never lower themselves to it because to desire a state is to have it. So if they truly desire it, they'll experience it. If not, that's fine. It's for another to enjoy. So this is an easy way to prove the power in equation. And always remember, like you can do this with material objects, you could also do the same when it comes to relating with people. As you do, you'll notice people showing up, saying the same things, implying the same things, sharing the same experiences, etc. The reality is, it was always happening like this. Only now you are aware of it and can choose how you truly desire to be. So if a person does not consciously use this power, they may just drift through life and assume that everything is happening for no reason. Imagination is the true reason. Again, as he says here, the world and all within it is our conditioned consciousness objectified. Consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. Neville refers to the causative companion as the pearl of great price, which means imagination creates reality. It simply means you get to play an active role in the molding of the world by applying the power through imagination. And there's no need to force yourself to lift a finger to do so. It's done for you. The unseen rearranges everything for you. So we can accept the pearl in one area of our lives. And then we can also prove it in other areas of our lives. As he says, otherwise a person could suppress, repress, or deny desire, which could cause it to manifest in undesirable ways. The pearl means, as he says, consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. Again, as he says, as well as the substance of the entire world. This is the truth that sets you free. 
to be how you truly desire to be. This is how I allow the unseen power to do it all for me in my life, beyond control, alongside many that I've spoken with. And them, I, and you are no different. We may appear differently for the theater of life on the screen of space, yet we are, in essence, one. Consciousness is one and truly cannot be divided. So in summary, going back to the beginning, he said, I am is the feeling of permanent awareness. And that's your essence, formless awareness. And from there, you can apply the law consciously, as consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world, which is again done by simply accepting it to be the way you desire, accepting desire. And as you go along with your life, if anything seems to throw you off, it actually doesn't. We let the world be and reimagine it to be how we truly desire it to be. Or to desire a state is to have it. And always remember, when applying this information, easy does it. No rush or stress. You get better at it with practice. And you'll find it helpful to apply the 7-Day Mental Diet by Emmett Fox video I made at the start of the year for you. Now, as you apply this information, you'll find that mind re-becomes nimble, fluid, purified, spiritual alchemy process. Each time you use your imagination lovingly on behalf of another or yourself. Literally, this causes identification to beliefs not true to be released and it gets easier. Referred to as pure of heart, heart in scripture refers to the subconscious aspect of the one mind. Neville has a lecture on it, one of my favorites. It's called the pure of heart. It's also normal and actually ideal to release the emotions and not force yourself. Emotions are energy in motion. We let them be. So it's well worth it then to develop the ability to suggest to yourself something and accept that suggestion. And you'll find that from that premise, everything happens automatically and ideally as you allow yourself to be how you truly desire to be. And this is your true nature by definition. Allowing yourself to be how you truly desire to be. Unnecessary suffering can be caused by not accepting that we already are all that we desire to be. So go to the end, all the way to the end. My end includes people showing up, relating with me the way I imagine, which is love. And I trust it's the same for you as well. And always remember, this has truly nothing to do with appearance. We change it inside and others reflect the change, all done for you by the unseen power within you. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, Love is who I truly am. Unconditional in my essence, which I represent everywhere I go as people show up to mirror the love within me as I remain in my home, which is my ideal state of consciousness. It reflects accordingly as everything, wherever I go, as all who show up and enjoy sharing that state with me as far as my senses perceive. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.